Hello Abuja, compliment of season to you all. Tonight we're outside for Life Security Leadership Initiative Dinner and Award Nights. And tonight a lot of dignitaries from Works of Life that undertook the five days training on the role of adaptive leadership in mitigating the impact of security will be honored tonight and also most of them will be given certificate after the exclusive training. I'll be following your reports from this red carpet here where a lot of them will be talking to us on the impact of the training on them. So let's get to see your name and designation. Good evening. I'm Ambassador Dr. Nathaniel Obioha. Um, so I'm a chartered fellow as well of this CIPG. From your point of view, how will you describe the just concluded five days master class that you undertook, sir? Um, so if you, if you look at it from the team of the event, the role of adaptive uh, leadership uh, in security and counterterrorism, I think it positions the event as the heart of um, where leadership should start from in whether you're trying to deal with issues of security or you're even trying to deal with issues of m maximizing and harnessing the potentials of individuals, adaptation of your leadership style is very critical. Understand when to t make a decision, how to make that decision, what is the implication of the decision, and be flexible as the situation and environment change. You adapt your style to the changing situation of em and environment. So the event, I believe, has prepared uh, current and future leaders on how they can lead, lead better in creating a more peaceful and secured world. As an individual, how do you intend to implement this in your day-to-day -day lifestyle and also use this as a way to contribute your quota to the development of your country? Even if it's the point of changing our electoral landscapes such that we're able to identify leaders that can apply some of the concepts we're talking about adaptation. Because you can't, you know, ruling a country of more than 270 million requires a lot of leadership skills. And one of those skills would be ability to adapt to the circumstances. So, first uh, sphere of influence for me is my um, constituency, like I said. But I'm also intending to organize youths. I actually run a small um, program that I call Matalon. It's basically preparing young children and having them interested in leadership and mathematics. So I'm trying to see how I can harness the potential of mathematics skill in leadership applications. So uh, much as I um, gratitude to her, particularly but to the entire team as well, uh, even the vendors she's using, you see very high quality um, service from the vendors uh, and I also want to thank the speakers that came in. Uh, all of them were spot on, they, they, they really very savvy in their subject and I think they imparted a lot of knowledge. So generally it's a lot of thanks to all of them and I hope uh, we'll continue to really um, deliver top quarter or top notch events like this one. Uh, I think it's a good place to start. So I'm full so how you describe this five days masterclass? Uh, well, um, the five days uh, master class has been a very um, impactful, interactive, and um, uh, well um, knowledge, you know, full of knowledge. Um, it's really worth it, I would say. It's, it's, it's what's been part of um, because um, I've learned so much from it. Um, there's a lot of information that has been passed across. Um, like I always say, um, it's, it's not enough to, to hear, it's not enough to know. Um, all we have received, um, I think it's time for us to go out there and, um, and apply it in the world. So it's, it's, really, it's really good, it's, it's been worth it. Talking about adaptive leadership, how do you intend to apply it to your daily lifestyle and also try to impart your vicinity and the country at large? Um, well, the adaptive um, leadership thing is, is um, I think it's, it's the hub of the masterclass, actually. Um, and I, I see it from the point of view where it's more individualistic. Um, as a leader, you want to um, adapt to, you know, your community. You want to be able to adapt to um, certain situations. And uh, regardless of what has gone wrong, you want to be able to, um, you know, revitalize, um, you know, and rejuvenate, you know, and also reconstruct and restructure.
you know, certain things that have gone apart, you know, or fallen apart. You want to be able to bring them together. And um, success is the key word, regardless of what has happened. You, you want to ensure, you know, that you, you know, um, everyone succeeds, not just you. And the community is, you know, is happy at large. So with all that I've actually um, imbibed, you know, from this um, leadership masterclass and um, particularly adaptive leadership, um, my, my purpose or my, um, my drive is to, to go out there and, um, and ensure that I adapt to, you know, the community, adapt to, you know, you know whatever, you know, the community has get those things together, you know, the broken bottles, gather them and make a full bottle out of it and so that everyone can be happy. Last two before let's go up red carpet. So how would you describe the trainers that took out time, the different trainers that took out time to engage you? Um, well, um, I think it's, um, they've actually sacrificed a lot um, and um, looking at the quality of trainers, I think they are very, um, very, very, um, research-based, knowledge-based, um, they are well-informed. Um, and um, I, I really appreciate, you know, the efforts and um, so much hard work they've put into it. Um, because I know uh, it takes a lot of hard work um, to deliver such um, a well, notable, um, you know, you know, best delivered lectures and teachings. So I, I, I really I really appreciate their efforts. Uh, yes, Dr. Raju. Uh, we are from which country, sir? Uh, from Zambia. So uh, from what you've learned so far, how will you describe this five days exclusive masterclass? It is excellent. You know, there are so many things, you know, concepts, you know, with the adaptive leadership. Of course, theory, they look very nice. But, you know, when you go to the practical side of it, there are so many challenges. Mainly things, as I explained earlier, should be concentrate on ethical and moral standards. Then only you will become adaptive. Of course, sometimes you may not be adaptive, which is also right. Uh, like, uh, for example, I'll give you Abdul Kalam in India. He was the president. He is the people's president. But, you know, he was not to be adaptive. He, he, he didn't like, you know, adapting to the corruptive practices and many wrong things. So he wanted to stick to his principles. He's a scientist. His vision was to see that uh, in the India, that there is no blind person. That was his vision as a scientist. But how is it possible with the, so many corrupt practices and other things? He stood to be a good leader. Leader needs to be the, having the knowledge, skill and attitude. But ultimately, when uh, the second time president came, he, he refused to stand. He, 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 he said, no. I can't work with you. So, there where is the adoption here? You could not adapt with wrong practices. He stood ground with his principles. So, adaptive leadership is that, you know, when you are right and things are right with moral and ethical issues, then you adapt to those things. Otherwise, you stick to your ground. Abdul Kalam is one of the examples. So, how will you sh describe the five day days um, adaptive leadership experience in Nigeria so far? Yeah, it's good, very good, you know. We have, we will learn, you know, every time we learn new things, you know, how to adapt to certain situations, even in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, in any country in the world. So, it's a, it's a continuous, continuous learning process. So, from your experience so far, how will you describe Nigeria and the people of Nigeria so far? Uh, the people are very friendly, very, you know, good. You know, trying uh, trying to help other people. So, good experience. The last thing before, let's go off the red carpet, sir. What will now be your take home once you're back to your country? Yeah, I'm going to tell, you know, inspire the people to say, I went to Nigeria and the people are very good. They treated me very well. And, you know, they have that spirit of helping others and see that there is a peace in the world. That's what Nigeria is trying to do. This, this is the message I will take. I'm Dr. Oladipo Benro. So how, from your own experience, how will you describe this five days exclusive, exclusive masterclass that you just undertook? Uh, interestingly, it's like you've been eating bread. Now we come to um, Abuja to eat bread. So what that teaches me now is that 
the quality of uh, the lecturers, the quality of the outstanding participants we met has contributed very immensely. At least, it's even more than going to a school of thought. So, it's quite awesome. That three, four days has been quite impressive and uh, quite rich. Talking about the role of adaptive leadership, how do you intend to put into your day-to-day -day lifestyle and also use it and impart your generation, sir? Oh, thank you. It, leadership is a process and uh, you can't assume it. You have to undergo it. And the best way to actually quantify whether you are a true leader is to interview a successful leader. So leadership is not all by, you see, just collecting, collecting. It's giving ability to serve. It's what you know, brings out the leadership skills in you. So you don't just say, I'm a leader. You start directing that. No, you should be very neutral and ability to serve people brings out your outstanding quality as a leader. Also assessments, with several um, trainers that came to lecture on different courses. It's been very awesome and uh, I will remark them as excellent because the discussion catches across all you know spheres of life. It's like a global discussion. It doesn't narrow down to one kill. It goes to so many kind of what it takes takes on daily basis what it takes to assume what it takes to benchmark the future and what and what you're supposed to know so that at least you can be just not only in the society but at corporate level and individual level all serving towards humanity it's been very awesome so for let's go up the red carpet sir how are we going to rate the ngo that took up took it upon themselves to um organize this great training oh the ngo has been quite uh uh, excellent in rating. This is not the first one they are doing, so I'm not surprised. I'm, uh, you know, I'm always impressed that any time they come up with you know activities like that, it has to be very awesome because you have to meet so many qualitative people. You meet, you can network well, and uh, your take home will always be you'll be better off than what you are before. Thank you. Greg Habert tonight, a senior delegate from Ghana, they've been introducing themselves to us. Let's get to meet what's the name, sir. I am Bishop Dr. Peter Kujosaki, the National President of the United Nations Association of Ghana, as well as uh, the National Patron of uh, International Peace and Governance Council. That's uh, why I'm here. So from what you've seen so far, uh, the just complete five days masterclass executive training, what's your view, what's your remarks so far? Oh, all that I would say is that it's good to always brainstorm and also have the knowledge base increase. So all the lessons given are truly impactful. It has influences and we are going to live with it. It's very, very uh, appreciative. Okay, thank you. Now to you, so let's get to your name, sir. Yeah, my name is His Excellency Ambassador Stephen Kojosaki and I'm here as the Director of international relations and national coordinator wafuna ghana chapter and also international association of world peace advocates which has a consultative status with the united nations has appointed me recently as the focal point to the united nations or african countries and on behalf of the unipec united nations international peace and governance council i'm the african envoy to the united nations on sustainable development goals from your own point of view, are we this I come with multiple rules as well? Sorry, sir. From your point of view, are we describe the trainers and the trainees from, from the just concluded exclusive masterclass? Thank you very much. I realized that the whole lessons were much participatory. Both the trainer and the trainees were involved in the lessons treated so far especially with the concept of peace and security, realize that there were a lot of information given, insights were given to the trainees and the assurances were that they will go back and implement such knowledge base and transfer it to other areas of learning. The last of all, let's go to recap carpet, sir. How will you describe the people of Nigeria so far from the few days we spent in this state, in this country, the name is what state? You know, Nigerians and Ghanaians are like twin brothers. The only difference is that we always beat them with our Ghanaian jollof. However, across the world, 
Nigerians are amazing personalities. They are hardworking, they are determined, and they always want to make sure that they register their presence wherever they find themselves. And as we speak, the Deputy Secretary General of the World, which is Her Excellency Amina Mohammed, who happens to come from the stock of uh, British and that of Nigeria, is doing amazing things for the world as a lady partnering with His Excellency Kotares of the United Nations as the Secretary General. They are doing so many great works for the world. Even though we are experiencing uh, tensions at Previous in the world like Ukraine, Russia, Hamas, and uh, Israel, and other water areas. But overall, you realize that they are leading the team of the United Nations to break uh, barriers that has not been championed in the world before. As we speak now, we have the youth being co opted into the United Nations General assembly system the women front and many works and even from cop 28 we realize that commit actions there have been a fund that will support developing countries to be able to save ourselves from the impact of covid uh, covid night and then climate change actions so nigeria on the whole when you go to nigeria in missions it is my home and once i came here the reception that they have given to me is so amazing and mind-boggling and i will encourage the rest of the african countries to learn from nigeria so that together as big brothers and ghana being the strong backbone as the country which has its independence first among the african countries has become the gateway to africa this synergy will be strengthened and be become so strong said so that Africa will be a next generation as a destination for all other countries to come and learn from what we and Nigeria are doing together in this continent. Thank you very much. Now to you, Sabifa, let's go to the red carpet. What from the word of advice and encouragement to all the students that undertook this master class talking about leadership adaptive? Uh, all that I will say is that just as my uh, colleague said, Nigeria and Ghana share a common identity. If you take uh, humility, gentleness, uh, hospitality, and things that make people live as brothers, we share common uh, spirit. So I will entreat the youth coming that life starts from somewhere. They should not rush. They need to learn from those that are leading them and study the good side of them. No human being or any institution perfect in this world, but yet, taking it from the total perspective, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, and other African countries, we are showing the whole world that we can live better through family and community uh, sharing. When we live together as a community members, then our youth will see the way we interact, the way we share, the way we love, and then they will take from us. We should eschew what we call uh, the winner takes all spirit. We should eschew what we call uh, that of pride, that I will take everything in an a, a bossy manner, an arrogant manner, and I'm not going to accept my brother as I need to be accepted. We need to come down in a human form, in a humility form. Show the youth that if you want to be great, you learn to be a servant. So I've been treating our government and all leadership that the youth will learn good things from us through our deeds. And if we go down to tell them that we were once the youth and now we are the leaders, we should see the youth as the leaders of themselves today. If we encourage them and inculcate in them the spirit of what? Humility. The spirit of service. That if you find yourself in any position, see to it that you are there to serve. You are not there to lord over anybody. And also riches comes when you give out your best through service. And when you are a servant for people, the people also hold serve you and then you enrich yourself so the youth should not see themselves that they are at the back door they should see themselves that they are part of whatever will make life meaningful they are part with the leaders so they should trade with them
they should go along with them and imitate them, emulate them as, as the good ones. They should copy the good not, not the bad in the society that when they get position, they use the position to lord over people and siphon whatever is for the masses. So, so what forms your advice to the youth in Africa, I won't say Nigeria to be precise? You know, uh, statistically it has shown that uh, Africa has the youngest youth force across the globe and the most educated uh, youth around the globe as we speak. So I realize that uh, we all know it is a common knowledge that anytime there is war in our region or across the world, youth are being used as a conduit to foment trouble. But I want to tell the youth that there is hope for them. Some of us are an evidence that whatever skills, whatever knowledge that you acquire through learning, learning and apprenticeship, it is never wasted. Just be patient, keep doing what you are doing, and knowing very well that one day a big door will open to you. As we speak, representing Africa countries at the United Nations as a focal point, it did not come just overnight. It is through hard work, determination, and being purposeful. Just recently, when you look at my article in one of the Business and Financial Times, I had admonished the youth that they should not follow divisive and uh, hate speech that is being carried out in our airwaves. It is not encouraging. Let us engage in productive discourse. Let us learn the technologies that are changing and transforming the world. Africa has a lot of skill sets and talent. With little capacity building training, we can be a beacon to the whole world. So there is no hope lost. My name is Professor Ayodele Joseph. Sir, from your point of view, how will you describe this training so far and the reaction from the students? Well, it's been an eye-opener first for me as a resource person and I'm sure the students themselves, at least you have seen the other side of leadership, that there are some forms of leadership that come impromptu, there are some forms of leadership that are situational and that's why we took time to talk about adaptive leadership. There are some leadership that will come that you may need to adapt to that situation. And I think we had a swell time day before and and the students are excited about it too. You're talking about adaptive leadership and also security. Let's use Nigeria as a case study. What's your view on this as a nation? Well, we, I told the students when we had a class that um, the approach, the, the issue of security is dynamic. It changes. So the approach we give to insecurity should be dynamic. And that's where the issue of adaptive leadership comes. And I gave instances. What President Goodluck did, the challenges he had when he was a leader, it's not the same thing Buari had. And I'm sure it's not the same thing Bola Tunibu is having. So each of these leaders have their own unique challenge as far as security is concerned. And that is the main point or the main area where adaptive leadership comes in. So the last note for let's go of the red carpet. So what forms your advice to all the students so far? Well, I think the students are energized. They are prepared. Uh, I'm sure they have been exposed. And I, I'm, I bet in the nearest future we're going to be hearing a lot about them because um, the lectures they've had have been eye-opening to them concerning leadership. So in the nearest future, I'm, going to, I'm sure we're going to be hearing good testimonies concerning them. The program is basically for ex uh, executives of your various organizations. So you have to tell them about this leadership to treat people right, to know how to behave in their organization. The um, natural says is that when you get to the peak of your career, you you find it hard to adapt to new change. So bringing this topic, you know, opens people's eyes to different view because you will see uh, various executives like yourself that are there. So you know, you think you learn from them. You by the time you hear people talk from different points of view, you know, you have to pick the ones that is most important. That will be useful for you in your place of work and that is what brought about the topic because we know we are dealing with executives and other people too so you know leadership is never too much to train people on and also security be aware of your environment be aware of your surroundings know what is happening in the country what number of edition is this it is almost the sixth or seventh edition <laughs>
On this note, I'd like to know more. How, how interactive is the students and the trainers? Our participants are really, really informed and interactive because, you know, I, like I said, we deal with executives. They are aware. So it's just giving them, uh, making them adapt to change in the 21st century, telling them what is invoked, what they should do in their various organizations, what they should adapt to. So, you know, talking to the resource person is also mature. It carries the class along. They ask questions. There are questions time where you can ask questions. They interact. And, you know, nobody is, an, is a monopoly of knowledge. You know, when sometimes even when the resource person talks, they chip in things and you also learn. So that's why it's interactive. So on the last one for Let's Go, the Red Cap ML, during our discussion with most of the trainees, they really took our time to air their view on how impactive the training has been. On this one, I'd like to ask, what would be your advice to all the trainees so far? My advice to all the participants so far is that whatever the, they've learned during the course of the masterclass should be put into practice in their various organizations because it will help. This is not just one person saying something, but people from different points of view, different walks of life, advising. You know, of course, you pick one or two things you will use in your various organizations. So I want to... Um, advise them to really pick whatever they think is good for their various organizations and they will not regret it. Thank you very much.